Hey guys, so what is one of the things people tend to struggle with when they first start potting max FCM buffs? A lot of you might say vanguards, maintaining 120 stats and not losing ticks, which is true, but the biggest thing people seem to struggle with is inventory management and banking throughout the raid. So this video will be covering some of the things you can do as well as things to consider to help improve your banking game. However, I'll also be throwing thieving into the mix because banking at thieving plays a huge part into how your inventory will look at the chest before ohm. So, let's jump right into it. Now, I'll be making the assumption everyone is roughly close to or is max combat in regards to prayer points for revitalization related notes made later in the guide. There are also some instances where you can chug potions while running to rooms during encounters or near the end of rooms to not only make room, but to also be healthy in preparation for other rooms. I'll go over some of those specific instances as the guide goes on, but I might miss a couple of those instances. One more thing, you can scout a solo raid where it's easy to get to the resource room as soon as possible and use the chest there to practice your banking. It's a good way to get more familiar with chambers banking fast, so I'd highly recommend doing this. Starting off, let's go over the banking and inventory management experience at CMs. When banking in chambers, at least when utilizing the private storage, it uses a first in, a last out system, or Philo for short. So usually items you don't want to see again get banked first as they will come out last. As for depositing all items, it'll bank items from the bottom right first, then work its way backwards all the way to the top left. It's also important to make sure that when you're banking your items to never have any gaps for your top rows of gear, as this will shift your inventory. Now, if you bank with gaps in your inventory, or you had an item in the wrong spot, you can deposit all once more, grab an item that you're okay to fill a gap with, then flip withdraw all again. Another scenario to look out for is if you withdraw all, and let's say there's an item that, before you hit withdraw all, was in a bad spot. To fix this, all you need to do is just move said item that messed up your inventory to the bottom of your inventory, then hit deposit all, and withdraw all again. Both these methods should help you when your inventory gets jumbled up. In regards to inventory management, try to keep items in convenient spots and don't be afraid to move items during the downtimes of encounters or during an encounter. You can also clump items beside each other, whether for putting on the most important items first or for quick banking. You can also get rid of unneeded items too or chuck potions to make room. Let me go over a few examples of what I mean by all of that. In regards to the gear you want to get on first, if you're not the fastest switcher in the west, I try to get on what I deem the most important switches first. I like my gear laid out as such since it lets me swap from any style while getting the most accuracy for the appropriate style. Another thing is if you know you need to swap from one style to another quickly, for example the spec, make sure to have set items close together, like if you're swapping from mage to melee to BGS. I move my BGS as my first switch instead of my scythe. Also if items are in disarray, try and move items in your downtime. This is usually something that you'll see me do a lot at all. At Ice Demon, you can put the items you won't need for Floor 2 close together so that when you deposit all into withdrawing all, you can quickly rebank said items. In this clip, you can see me put those four items close together, then I place my axe in a spot that won't shift it, but will sit beside those items. Then I quickly bank all the five items. You can do other variations or spots for this as well. The items you'll usually bank at ice as non-prep are as follows. Blowpipe, Bandos God Sword, Salve, Pickaxe, Chins, and a full stamina. When you run back for potions, you can then bank your lockpick in a private last. As for the prepper, you wouldn't withdraw all, but you can still keep the items you know you want to bank close together. Those items are your water runes, pickaxe, salve, and axe if you decide to grab one versus having someone bank one in public for you. Doing it like this just makes it easier to get out of the bank and gives you extra time to do whatever needs to be done, especially if you're behind for whatever reason, like if you have bad chops or a tree dies, etc. This might be what you need to do to be on time for specking. There are also a few instances where you can get rid of unneeded items or potions early on to make inventory space. For example, near the end of Vanguards, if you're running double stamina, you can chug up your first stamina as a full 4 dose potion should last for the rest of the raid. And you can also sip your squirk and drop the beer glass since assuming you're 99, it'll put you at 102 thieving and you only need 100 for getting 4 grubs. So it shouldn't tick down all the way to 99 before thieving ends. Vanguards can drop a maximum of 5 potions, 
so as long as you have 5 spots open, you should be fine to grab all the potions. You can also equip a Sang and Defender 2 at the end to make more room, but after grabbing your potions, if you still have a lot of inventory room, you can put on your range gear or your melee gear in quads. Just make sure you're not wearing any items you intend on banking post thieving, such as mage gear. If you are not wearing your melee gear and claws though, usually your scythe will be the first item for your melee switch. Swap out the scythe with your claws once you're running over to the thieving chest since you'll typically bank the scythe for floor 3. Also, try to place your hammer, scythe, and harm somewhat close to each other as those are the items you'll be typically banking after thieving. Now, if you get a kill at vanguards and your inventory space is tight, Always prioritize grabbing the overload if one drops and go for potions first. Then grab the bruise, then revive. If you do have space though, grab everything you can. Try to keep the vanguard potions close together as you'll be putting them in public shortly. You can have open spots near the bottom of your inventory as well so you don't have to worry about moving the potions when you pick them up. Alright, up next is thieving. Now your banking at Ice Demon will carry over to the thieving room as the next time you bank will be a thieving. When you get here, all you have to do is bank any pots you grab from vanguards if you get a kill in the public, then go to private, deposit all, and right as you hit deposit all, if you have a lockpick, withdraw it from your private after hitting deposit all. Then you want to move over to one of the following spots that are shown on the map. The spots highlighted are the best spots to use, however due to poison chests sometimes you might need to move to a different spot. Now the reason these chests are considered good is because between 4 chests, you only use up 1 tick moving from chest to chest. And usually with 4 chests, you shouldn't run into the issue of having to wait for chests to respawn for grubs. This spot in the middle is a bit weird though, in the sense that you have to follow a specific rotation in order to not lose ticks. Open chests like this in said order to not lose ticks, or open it in a reverse order. Either what works. There's some other things you can do as well that are more min-maxing, which is rotating players from spot to spot when you have people dumbing from afar. That way, they can start feeding quicker than having to run back to the spot and potentially screwing with other players. For example, let's say a player in spot 2 dumps. The player in spot 1 can proceed to move over to spot 2, which would be less runtime for them to start picking chests again, compared to just having the person who was originally in spot 2 run all the way back without hitting any chests. Another thing to note, if you don't have the Deo plugin installed from the plugin hub, I'd highly suggest downloading it since it's very useful to track how many grubs are needed to complete the room. It does estimate it on averages, but for the most part, it's accurate. Here's also some important things to consider for the room, as well as when to go about dumping. At 95 thieving, you get 2 grubs minimum, but higher levels mean higher chances of netting 3 grubs. 95 is huge in terms of time save, and if everyone's 99 and brings squirks, it's also an 8 second time save too, as 100 plus gives you a chance at 4 grubs. 79 grubs total are needed to complete the thieving room, but having extra in the trough is good because 15 or less grubs in the trough means a scab eats at a rate of 1, while anything above 15 will cause them to eat at a rate of 2 until only 15 grubs remain in the trough. Lastly, you want to follow the grub tracker, and when the tracker estimates 70, everyone should dump except for the person who's the furthest away from the trough. They should only dump once they get a full inventory, or if the grub count reaches 100, whichever comes first. Please note, you might also have to adjust your grub counter estimates in the thieving plugin if people on your team are all above 95 thieving, you set the value to 225. But if people are 99 and are using squirt juice, then set the value to 260. Otherwise, if you have people below 95, if it's only one person, they can call when the dump if they have the plugin, as the plugin accurately tracks your own grubs. However, if it's two or more people with less than 95 thieving, then you just want to try to pick 10 or 20 grubs over the initial dump crowns. Once you've done the final dump, now you should withdraw all the items in your private storage and prepare for the third floor. Now a big thing to make note of is that if you have some personal potions left over like some Cerodome and Brewer Restore left, some items can be left behind. So make a note of if you have some potions left after Vanguard so once you withdraw all, you know you'll need to manually grab some items. Usually items for floor 3 that are still in the chest. Another quick side note, sometimes a prepper likes to leave the gopher potions and a Noxfer for another person to make. 
preferably being one of the surges due to them having a lot of inventory space, plus banking or whoever's using a beaming spot closer to the trough. I'd say if you need extra time to do this, you can dump and make the potion once the scab is around 45% HP left, otherwise I'd do it right when the grub tracker is at 100. You should then put it at the bottom of your inventory as that'll now be your overload. Then you'll prepare to withdraw all your gear. You can also choose to mix it after you withdraw all your gear, but at that point it's more preference and doesn't make too much difference. Just remember that the overload you mix will also be the one you typically want to drop for the prepper after they relock for guards. Alright, so next is going to be post thieving banking. So you just dumped your last inventory of grubs and withdrew all. Now there are a couple of things to make note of here based on your role. Firstly, let's go over what items to bank. Remember how I said earlier, Philo? That means you want to bank the items you don't really need first, so that it comes out last. This is the order you want to bank your items in the private. Some of these items you won't have, so if you don't have them, just don't worry about it. So typically the first item you'll bank is going to be a harm slash Kodai. Harm might seem like a good weapon of her own, or maging in general, but the Sang heals and accuracy are just much better than harm, so it's only used on Ice Demon. Bank this item first. Secondly, the melee items you don't need for floor free should be banked next. These are your Scythe, Hammer, and Bandos Godsword. As of now, Hammer and Scythe are not really needed for bird floor, so you can bank them. The order doesn't necessarily matter in regards to how you bank them, but they should of course always be banked after the harm, but before the next items. Lastly, bank all your mage gear except for Trident, Book of the Dead, or Arcane. The Book of the Dead would only be if you're running Thralls, but you don't have an Arcane, then you just bank whatever offhand it is since accuracy doesn't help as much as defense does at Baby Mutt. If you guys find that you always have a lot of bruise in your runs, you can bring in a Cult down as well, but otherwise, you can just bring the same. Also, if you want to keep the order of your Mage Gear consistent when you withdraw all, start with the Mage item you want to bank last, then bank it backwards, starting from the last item to the first item, since remember, First in, last out. Alright, so let's review over the order real quick. Harm first, barely item second, mage gear minus saying last. And you make slight tweaks once you feel more comfortable. Now there is one last variation for banking you can follow. Instead, you bank one melee item last. Typically I like doing my hammer last as it's one handed. This variation can be good since if you equip your trident plus offhand at the final chest, when you hit withdraw all, that item would go there instead, and it keeps your mage gear from shifting. However, it's not the preference at that point. The crosser doesn't really need to bank as many items though, as they don't overstock. They do, however, need some space for extra pots. But this does mean that they can afford to bring a slightly heavier mage switch like an occult and bracelet. Also, if overloads were handled correctly at ice, assuming you only get one overload and the gopher pots of vanguards, there should be two full overloads, a one dose, and a two dose. So everyone on the team should have their own overload so you don't have to worry about dropping overloads and losing any ticks or having people run back to grab dropped ones. Now we've already went over banking so let's talk about what you want to start withdrawing. This is going to be very dependent on what role you are. Now if you're a surger you want to grab 3 rebites and an overload. You want to try to leave the Xeric aids in the chest for the other 2 rolls. So the crosser is usually going to grab 3 rebites, an overload, and 1 or more Xeric aids. Just to make sure to leave at least one Xeric aid for the chinner. Now the reason that you want to have the crosser to grab more brew, usually two, is so they can chug a brew after Vesperlet dies. They usually want to skip the chest before rope so they can cross as soon as possible. So having a second brew lets them heal up during and after rope since the mages can do quite a lot of damage. Now, as the chinner you will want to withdraw one overload, three revites, and one Xeric aid. The Chinner has time to hit the chest before rope, but having the one Xeric aid before hitting the chest lets them get healthy early on, and also means they can bring an extra brood they wouldn't be able to bring down otherwise. Now, after you've gotten your potions, overload up and sip your stamina, then get ready to exit the thieving room. Now, assuming you leave right as thieving ends, you want to burn a tick before going into Vespula since otherwise, you'll spawn Vespula early and it'll sting a grub, which is problematic in fives. To do this, the easiest way is to walk a tile and continue running through. Then you hit the Abyss of Portal from this tile. Do the room as normal, but as it approaches low HP, call how large slash small your hits are if you're on VC. In the situation that grubs need to be fed, it's ideal that someone with Xeric Aid slash Bruise should be the one that feeds. It'll usually be the crosser, so they should grab three blossoms and feed the grub. 
So once Vespula ends, the next step is completing your assigned roles and everyone but the Crosser and Pepper begin overstocking. So what the hell is overstocking you might be asking? Well, overstock is when you fill up on potions in order to drop them for other members of your team, namely the Pepper and Crosser in Efficient CM5's teams. Why would we need to do that you might ask? Why can't you just grab the potions themselves? Well, I'm glad you asked. As I said earlier, once Vespula dies, the Crosser will start healing up and will skip the chest before a rope completely in order to cross as soon as possible, which in turn makes for a faster tightrope time. The only time the Crosser would not skip the chest is if Vespula was Turbo Doom and they have zero prayer with no revite left, but this doesn't happen too often. The Prepper, once they relog, also skips the chest on logging in to reach guards as soon as possible. So this is why we have three people on the team who overstock on potions at the chest before tightrope so that the Roamer and Prepper can be fed. This is also why it was mentioned earlier post thieving that you want to bank the unneeded items for for free as it lets you bring down more potions. Now, the three roles who overstock are the Chinner, Dustpots, and Telegram, but each role overstocks a bit differently. All overstockers make sure to equip an offhand and a primer as well for an extra space. Once Vespa dies, whoever's on Vespots will loot all potions. While they're on their way to the chest before rope, they should start chugging brews to get their HP close to 118 and then step revite until they are close to 99 prayer. Once they hit the chest, they want to make sure to have two full revites, the enhance, and they should fill up on as many brews as possible. As they arrive at rope, they should also tag a major to help the crosser not take as much damage. The telegrabber on the other hand will run to the chest and will begin sipping revite to get their prayer as close to 99 as possible. Then, they'll make sure to have two full revites and fill up on Zerokades. To have a space for Telegram, they will chug a brew on their way to rope, then tag one major to help the crosser not get railed. Now, if they chug the brew after Vespula due to having a personal Serodomen brew, then remember to leave one empty space when you're overstocking them. Other than that, just make sure to have one space open, then Telegram the crystal, afterwards click on the barrier and your job's done. The Chinner, on the other hand, will chug a broom on their way to the chest and fill up on only brews. Now, if the Vespula is really bad and you have no rewrite left whatsoever, grab a rewrite first. Otherwise, you can ask both Overstockers to grab three rewrites each and they can drop one for you then. While Chinning, the Chinner can proceed to brew once they've taken damage as well. Now, here's some additional notes to mention. I did say this earlier, but as an Overstocker, if your prayer is low, Chug Revite to get your prayer as close to 99 since you don't want to go down to the next floor with low prayer. If you have partial potions left, you can bank them and grab full potions instead. And lastly, in the scenario Vespula is doomed where it's super slow, then Overstockers should both grab 3 full Revites instead of 2. So typically 60 plus prayer points and a full Revite, assuming you're enhanced, should be enough for floor free, even with Thralls being used. Cup on the other hand will need probably around 5 to 6 sips of revite assuming thralls and you relog with 99 prayer. Otherwise, they need even more if they log in with less prayer. If you find this is not working out prayer wise for the team, then an extra revite can be grabbed. Other than that, that's the basics of overstocking and post vespula procedure. After rope is done, Avengers should begin venging and everyone should start brewing as close to 118 as they run down and then if their prayer is low, then sub a revite to bring their stats back up before the next overload tick. This means you'd have to brew on overload ticks less during Guardians, and also you have a much lower chance of dying at guards. You can also just brew on tick downs as you run down if your prayer is close to 99 and you're tied on revite. Secondly, the prep relogs and whoever made the overload earlier and or has a full one should drop an overload for them and then the prepper will grab it on their way over. The prepper will also redrop the overload for the person who dropped it for them. So the only time you should ever waste ticks to pick up a potion instead of hitting the garden is if you are the prepper to pick up the overload. Otherwise, you should make sure to enter gardens by first doing a hit, then situate yourself, set two tiles back, and start dropping potions in between your hits. Now both surges will drop one to two revites and a couple of brews in the middle two squares of guardians. Best pots will also sip and drop the enhance alongside the other potions. Everyone beside prep will usually sip the enhance. Chinner will also drop a couple of brews as well. Overstockers will typically have a revite and 3 to 4 brews left once they're done with dropping potions, but if there seems to be potions left on the ground near the end of Guardians, start picking them back up. Another note to make is that you'll proceed to drop brews throughout 4-3, usually at Mystics and Metadile for other members of a team, as space constraints based on their role might make it hard to grab 
all of the potions drop. With that former note being said, sometimes your prepper won't be able to take too many potions at Guardians and will always need some pots dropped from time to time. This is due to inventory constraints as some preppers will bring all of their gear to skip out and hit in the final chest and run straight down to have own pop up faster. So, some preppers will ask for bruise and revive during Mystics and especially during Meta Death, since after the small tree dies, they will have more inventory space after they drop their axe. Also, since the prepper overloads on their way to Guardians, they will always need an overload drop of Mudadal to sift during the encounter. Now one final note to make is usually unless you get a lot of overload drops from Vanguards, one person will be missing an overload due to sifting a 1 dose and will need one dropped at Mystics. If you run into that situation, see if you can decant the potion and get a gore to split the overload, so everyone at Mystics can have their own overload and no one will need one dropped to them outside of the prepper at Mudadal. It just makes it easier for everyone to overload as soon as their initial overload boost runs out. Now I've spoken a lot about banking inventory management, but now let's focus on preparing for the final chest. You can do this at any point such as at Mystics, but I typically adjust my inventory at Mudadal while killing Mama Mutt. During these rooms, whenever you find it easiest, start moving the items that you know you want to bank close together. So similar to Vanguard, just make sure you do have a couple of spaces open just in case you get one of the Metadal kills so you can pick up all the potions. You'll typically share the enhanced from the small Metadal, but the big Metadal on the other hand, you usually have to carry all the potions and the enhanced can't really be shared until you get into Ulm. Now, after the meat tree dies, you can drop your axe and sip whatever stamina doses you have left, if you bring any stamina. Venge Thrallers, once they cast their final Venge, can drop their stack of Deferens. And also, throughout the Metadal encounter and post encounter, you can also sip low dose potions to make more room as well. Next, try and make sure that there's empty spots where your mage gear would be, since when you withdraw all, that'll be the first set of items that'll come out if you bank properly. Now, once the room ends, there's one final chest you use before Alm. As you run there, you're free to chug up on any of those potions, as well as move any items that still need to be moved. You can also equip your trident and offhand as well while you're running to the chest. If you're someone who banked their hammer with their other melee items, if you don't want your inventory to be in complete shambles, you can move your pouch where your trident would normally be for your mage gear, so that way your mage gear will end up in the correct spots. But if you banked your hammer less, you don't have to do this. Otherwise your mage gear will come out a bit weirdly and it might take a bit more time to correct your inventory. Last thing, remember that the chest you'll usually be hitting is the chest in the room before Alm and not the one in the resource room. Now other than that, let's quickly go over what banking looks like once you hit the chest. Firstly, you hit withdraw all. Secondly, you deposit your unneeded gear for Alm. This would be your salve, pickaxe, arm, blowpipe, and claws. If you're bench camping, you can also bank the pouch. Thirdly, grab potions out of the chest. I try to grab two full revites and the rest bruise just to make sure that revites aren't left behind, which is important if the prepper makes just enough revite for the raid. Fourth and last, go into Alm. If you are the first one in, you can usually start in melee gear, but otherwise starting in mage gear when you enter is ideal, as if the melee hand spawns far from the entrance, you can hit the mage hand and run to the middle, or if it does spawn close, you can still mage from the melee hand. Afterwards, you would just try and spec once you're situated. Now, if your inventory is beyond full, to the point you wouldn't be able to even withdraw all your mage gear or a good amount of your mage gear, you will probably need to bank a few potions in public first, then go back to private, withdraw all, then bank your unneeded items and withdraw anything left behind. Then, you'd go back and grab any potions that might still be in the chest. Usually, to prevent running into the situation, see if you can drop potions for others if your inventory is somewhat full at Mystics or Mudadal. Also, you can have one person opt into Insta Start for Ohm. Ideally, someone who Insta Starts has, number one, high enough HP to tank an Ohm Otter or two, two, some prayer points left, three, a potion or two, so that means that there's a lower chance of potions being left behind if someone is able to go in with a few potions, and four, they have enough inventory space to click withdraw all and run straight down with all of their gear, nothing left behind. So usually, it's going to be the prepper who likes to insta start, especially if they're bringing all their gear down with them, as they can skip the final chest entirely and make Ohm come up a lot faster. However, sometimes if the prepper ends up getting a drop of Mudadal, or they're on critical HP or prayer, and don't have any potions, they can have someone else opt in to insta start. It just means that the person would have to hit the chest, withdraw all, then run down. So once you're inside and you're situated, make sure to drop potions near the middle of the room. Usually you should hold onto a restore and a brew or two, but otherwise try to drop the rest of your potions near the middle of the room. As for the overload, I pick it up when your overload is going to run out and then drop it. 
Usually everyone but Prep will need the Overload around the end of Phase 1 or shortly after, while Prepper will usually need it during Phase 3, although the timing can vary based on Floor 3 phase times or other events. So to end things off, let's go over a couple of additional and advanced tips. When starting off, don't feel too bad if you do need to spend extra time to make sure you have enough items. Eventually when you do more runs, you'll begin getting used to knowing if some items will or won't come out based on your inventory space or if you have crystal potions left over in your chest. Don't rush, as going in without the right items can be a big hindrance on the time. When withdrawing items in your private storage one by one, make sure to right click, then click on any withdraw option outside of withdraw X. This is so that you don't accidentally drag items, which in turn means it won't come out. You can also utilize menu entry swappers bank shift options if you want to be able to withdraw lots of potions by holding shift and clicking on said potion instead of having to right click and then hit any of the big number options. Now, if you're an overstocker and your prepper is behind, potions will not be done on time. In that scenario, you'll have to overstock at the final chest instead of the one before rope. This is a preference thing, but I like using screen markers to know where the deposit all and withdraw all button is, as it makes it easier for me to move my mouse over to set screen markers after inputting an action. Like if I click open private, then I can hover my mouse over set screen marker and press the button the second I see it pop up. I find it makes my bank a lot faster, especially for depositing all. Sometimes it's better to drop a one dose potion to make room. However, I would only suggest doing this if you're confident that you have more than enough of whatever potion you drop. Otherwise, this can possibly jeopardize the run. A final note is something that you can do if you want to go even further and bank much faster. This will require you to bank items in a certain order and makes more of an impact for the final chest than it does thieving chest solely since at thieving, you do have more time to bank before moving to the next encounter while at home, if the prepper is insta starting, your time to get into home gets cut much shorter. So the goal is to have it where when you hit deposit all, then withdraw all at thieving, your items you plan to rebank are all close together. But this will require you to bank items in a specific order, as well as before depositing all, having the items you used from Ice to Vanguards in specific spots too. This is of course a Bando Surger example, so for other roles you have to do a bit of science to figure it out how you would do it. Nonetheless, you'll see three examples based on what potions you have left over. This assumes BGS is also banked the last at Ice Demon with five items in your pipe. Now, I think it's not necessary to do this for thieving, but I just wanted to show you in case you guys want to try it out. However, this next example will be for final chest banking. This one I'd suggest learning for sure. For one, always make sure you have room for your mage gear up top, then see how many spaces you have left. I always tend to bank my harm staff first, and knowing I have 4 items in my bank, withdrawing all now means the harm would come out last as my 4th item. Using this knowledge, you can move items around in your inventory so that when you hit withdraw all, it ends up right by the items you need to bank for all. Look at this example here. I leave a gap in this spot so the harm goes there, then I quickly bank all the items I don't need for all. Doing it like this just means you can get out of private faster and you have better odds of getting into all on time. It might take a little bit of practice, but I do think it's worth learning. Anyway, that's it for the guide. There's a whole lot of information, so hopefully with the timestamps here, you'll be able to look through whichever section you might want to focus on and rewatch it a few times. But let me know if you have any questions or suggestions as well. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, farewell.